Hello and welcome to Spirit Stones Creative Crafts. This is Kat and I've got a tutorial for you today. Sorry it's been a while but the last time I did a video we made rubber stamp. And I said that what we were going to do this time is turn this rubber stamp into um, something on polymer clay. So this is what I have been doing. So I don't know if you can see the detail on them, but that's what we've been making. So I'm going to make one of them for you today. I'm also going to make one of these for you today as well. And this is the stamp that I've made. It's two different colours because I only needed to darken one bit. Don't like wasting ink or anything. Um, and so there's a little bit smaller ones over here which I'll probably use that today but just to show you how we do these as well so um, let's get on with it the things you're going to need is something to put your polymer clay on to cook what I mean by that is something that you can cut the piece out leave it on there and then just get on and cook with it on there like something like one of these or baking paper, greaseproof paper something you can bake it on so I don't have to move it because especially using Sculpey, I've been using Sculpey um, the last couple of days. I still use polymer clay as well. But there's a huge difference between Sculpey and polymer clay. So this is polymer clay, and this is the kind of movement I get when I squish it. It takes a while to condition it. And this is Sculpey, and this is just so soft. And in the first initial outlay of a piece of clay, it's I find it rather annoying to work with because it's too soft. However, when you get a little mark in your polymer clay, you can literally smooth it out really, really quite easily and get rid of any blemishes or marks on there. So that's what I love about Sculpey. Anyway, so you're going to need your clay, something to build your clay on, um, a point tool for doing the details on the flowers, um, one of these ball tools for making the little dips to put the little centre parts of the flowers in to make sure they stay in. I use my X-Acto blade to go around the edges and tidy the edges up when I've cut them. And you're going to need some cutters of some kind. Now, these cutters here I've made out of tinfoil stuff that go around the tea light candles. So I can do a video on them, how you make them, but that is what these are. And this is an ordinary heart cutter, which is this one here and I've got ovals, I've got all sorts, but um, I like the idea of using these. They work really well, I'll show you how to do one of them, we'll do that now. And we'll do one of these hearts, but we'll just do a smaller one. So you're going to have to excuse me, because I'm a little bit snuffly, because I've got hay fever, and it's driving me a little insane. So if I'm sniffing, I do apologise, I actually know for having my own children that it can be really annoying. So I'm just conditioning this. I've already got this one ready, because this is going to be for one. This one's for the other. Now, another thing you're going to need is one of these. Um, I swear to God this is going to crack on me at some point. It has all these tiny, tiny little cracks in it. Um, but anyway, I use this instead of a rolling pin to push down my clay. I don't know if you can see that. We can actually see all the little cracks in the plastic. Anyway, my camera seems so high up today, but I couldn't get it to behave itself. So... Anyway, let's get on. So what I'm looking for is just kind of an even consistency all over without any air bubbles. This is actually the fourth time, or fifth time, I've lost count now on that board of it, that, of doing this tutorial because my camera keeps playing up. So I am at some point going to need a camera. So that funny noise you keep hearing is this... It's such an amazing sound. Anyway, so that's good enough for me. I'm going to be covering most of it anyway. So, hey, Viva. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to be looking to cut our shape. I want to use that little heart. There it is. I couldn't find it for a minute then. I thought I think it'd gone a bit weird. Mind you, the kind of day I've had wouldn't surprise me if it just stood up and walked away. So, I'm going to lay this down and then I'm going to use this again and that allows me to keep even control of it so I'm 
hopefully not bending it too much because you know it bends over it can be quite flexible here so I mean you don't need me to do a tutorial on cutting I mean I'm just I'm just cutting so I like the shape of that heart so then I me personally take my blade then I'm just gonna move some of this stuff off here because there's just so much of it and I don't need it all here so the things I've already made can leave excuse me for a minute okay never the best prepared person in the world I must say so in amongst the hay fever we're gonna get this done Okay, so what I want to do now is I just do you want to scrape because any little bits from being cut that fray around the edges are the bits I just want to tuck in. Anything else, I can sand off later anyway, so it's fine. Um, now, something else that you might want to get your hands on, I think this stuff is just pure magic myself. This is butcher's paper, okay? otherwise known as peach paper and it's really 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 good for getting off fingerprints blemishes and marks so I just put it on and I rub it like this okay voila magic is all I can say on that front and it just works so wonderfully I just love it it's really good stuff now I'm a vegan so my beautiful beautiful husband was the one that went in the butchers and got it for me and they gave me a nice size sample piece I actually got a piece like you know this size again does you know this was torn off of that piece and another piece on top of that from one butchers and then a few more pieces in a different color from another butchers so it's butchers paper otherwise known as peach paper I haven't actually looked online because I was given enough to last me so I don't need to look online to buy any yet so we've got a rubber stamp and the few that I've made actually were from tutorials that I tried to do but my camera wouldn't let me and I've been using this corner here because it just works so well but I'm going to do something different now because I've tried so many times and I'm going to do this now when we press down on the rubber stamp we don't want to press down too hard because we're going to misshape our heart and we don't want to misshape our heart now if you do happen to make your heart go out of shape you can just recut it and you'll be fine but I want to save myself that work so I just want a nice even press all over there we go that <coughs> is absolutely perfect so now we're going to move on to what we do next okay so just prepared a few little things nothing major what I'm going to do now is I need a ball tool with a decent sized ball so excuse me when I dig to find one and drop one. That's not what I want. Okay. It's more like it. Right. Okay. So I would like to have my flower up here, I think. So what I want to do is I just want to make a little dent, nothing major, just to stick the centre of my flower in. Now, on these here, I've done the smaller flowers. And I do wonder, is it hay fever or is it the dust from the micro powders? Who knows? Anyway, so I've done these quite small and I've decided on this one, I just want one nice big flower, okay? So we'll see how it looks anyway. I just like playing around and see how we go. So what I'd like to do with this tool here is just go and put a few little dots for texture purposes on top of this. Now this keeps coming out, so I'm going to need to glue that in, because we need that to do these. Now, to roll out the petals, I've prepared mine, but to show you what I do, I do a circle, okay, with just my fingertips like this, and then I move my fingertips together like this, so it creates this kind of a shape, yeah? So do that again, so I roll a circle. And then I join like this, roll like this, and I get the shape here. So that is exactly what we are after. And so we do want some kind of point in there, really. And 
The others I was insistent on having five petals, but this one, I think it doesn't matter, really. Okay, we'll see how it looks. It might look really pants, and so therefore then I have to rebuild it. And I sometimes if I do bigger flowers, I may have to go back in and make the centre a little bit bigger. But all will be revealed in just a few minutes' time, I am sure. So I'm not sure exactly how many petals I'm going to have on here. Really should be an odd number, I guess, if you take a look at the Fibonacci sequence. And magically enough, I seem to have an odd number. So... Anyway, guys, while we're just building this here, I will ask um, what is a really good camera. Because I currently use a camera that is um, a stills camera that records for 10 minutes at a time. So that requires some editing then. And there's been times where I've been doing a tutorial, like yesterday, I was doing a tutorial on this camera. And then I didn't even know it had stopped recording. Had the camera for years, didn't even realise till today there was a sound on there that could alert me to the fact that it stopped recording. So my beloved husband went out and bought me this nice little digital camera. And it's meant to be HD and it was just the worst quality ever. So that was another failed tutorial, or more than one actually. So I'm now, I'm okay with going back to my old camera, it's fine. But ten minutes at a time... It's okay. It's all the space in between of having to do all that editing and all that putting together, which is fine. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I'm self-employed now. This is what I do as a living. And so every single moment I have is, like, precious. To me, anyway. So, I need to find something that's reasonably cheap. So, I know what to do. I need to be able to find something and soon, really, because I see my tutorials as part of what I do. I like teaching people, I like working with people. So this is a really good shape here. Look at this; it's already built in on a spiral there. So let's see if we can follow that in. That's pretty nifty. I like that. So this rubber stamp making is pretty good fun. I made the spiral one that I've got. Okay, that's good enough for me. One thing I've really learnt over the last couple of weeks is that being this pedantic really doesn't help me. And that I have to chill out a bit and just accept that there is nothing that is perfect, but at the same time, everything is perfect. So I really like this, it's really quaint, it's really cute, and I like having only the one flower. But what I will do, just because I like the idea, I'm going to put some little bits of orange around. Sorry if this goes off focus on the camera, but I can't actually see the screen because the screen is the opposite of here. So you can see here, and the screen is up on top of it, which is all the way up there, so I can't see so if I do go off of focus then please accept my apologies and know that I'm trying to get a better camera and work on it so just want to add these little bits of orange I like putting dots in I think I might make a rubber stamp of just like pure dots <laughs> polka dots everything me just polka dots Especially red and white polka dots. So I thought I might do a video um, to just show you how to make these. Just being a bit frugal, but why not? I mean, some of these are really expensive to buy, but I can do any shape. So you know, I've got plenty, got some others to show you the shapes I make, but I may as well just do that on the next video. And I thought it would also, I don't know, maybe you want to see my craft room. It's not the uh, most exciting, tidiest place in the world, as I'm sure anyone who crafts knows. But I'm happy to share that space with you and show you. 
my lack of organisation. Sometimes I can be organised. Well, there you go. So then, here is my lovelies. I could put some orange dots. Maybe one there. Maybe one in the centre there. So, okay, two little more orange dots. And then the only thing I have left to do then is cover it with micro powder. Okay. So, one in there. And one in the centre of there. And I just like these. It just adds a bit of colour and a bit of depth. And that's my choice and my opinion. And yours is yours. And you can do all the magnificent things that you want to do. And I have every faith that everybody's capable of doing this stuff. Uh, this this polymer clay thing becomes totally demystified the more videos and tutorials you watch, I tell you. Um, I've managed to do a few really good canes. I show you my most complicated ones that I have done. And they were just so easy to do. Like, really, really easy. So I'm getting a better understanding of how the bigger stuff works, which is great. Now, when I use this stuff, I always dab it into the lid. I don't like... <coughs> excuse me, I don't like tipping it out everywhere. So I'm not actually going to uh, shimmer up any of the flower except that which gets accidentally touched around the edges. Um, I think that just makes the flower stand out. I mean it stands out enough anyway, you know what I mean. But I don't know, I just like that it's not so it's my brush catching on my stand. So I would really like to hear from you guys what you like best, polymer clay, sculpey, I know there's a few others out there I haven't tried yet, polymer clay or sculpey, uh, fimo, fimo, whatever you'd like to call it, I would seriously like to know what you prefer and also if there's any tutorials you want to see please let me know and that's my timer, that's got nothing to do with this. So there we go. I just want to press everything into place. There we have it. That is number one. So let's get going on to the next one. Okay, so I've just cut out a circle and the reason I'm cut out a circle is because I'm going to have spirals and I just want to see how that looks against it. So I'm just tidying up the edges here. And I just want to, there's a little bit of a dip over this side. One of the best ways to sort these things out is just re-flatten it and then re-cut it. But uh, maybe not. Maybe we use a smaller circle and that will tidy up a whole load of things for me. Okay, so that will make life a little bit easier, we hope. But then again, I'll tell you, it's been such an unfortunate day of trying to get these tutorials out. Two days of trying to get these tutorials out, so I hope you like them because it's just been like a, just a big ache in the bum. And there you go. I'm trying again. And I've got lots of things made when I was trying to do them, so that's really good. And I haven't give up, given up, which is even better. That is always important. So the only things you're going to need for this one is your piece of polymer clay cut into whichever shape you want to cut it into your paper if you so desire to use it and then we're going to need our rubber stamp and some permanent ink okay the only permanent ink i have in the whole world is black i don't have any other color can't afford any other color just yet but it's okay. So I am going to darken this end this time because this is what I want to use. It's the smallest well as this end. Pretty cool stamp, huh? You can actually buy this stamp from me for £3.50, I think it is. That's how it works out. And it's pretty good, as you will see. Now, the first time I did this, um, I hadn't inked it up properly. And so it was a bit of a fail and we ended up having this on one side and then perfectly on the other side. So that's fine. So 
here we go put this down and again I just want an even pressure all over I don't want to change the shape of what I'm doing but you can always just recut it if you do end up doing more damage than you wish there you go really like that so um, the stamps by the way come unmounted I don't personally use mounts I find it so much easier not to but you can order this one and this one and there's a few others I've got as well I haven't got them out at the moment but and one thing I like about these is they actually stay black you, you can clean them off really really well um, but they stay black and I, I quite like that because then I can see what I'm doing Okay, so we've done this bit here then, and now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go in with a few kind of complementary colours. I'm going to go in with a bit of that purple, tidy some of this black where I kind of moved it a bit too much. And then, I really like that green, so I'm going to put a little bit of green on it, maybe something like a yellow or a gold. Okay, so I'm just going to go for this and we'll just see. So I'm going to start. Now, the way I do these, I, I do, I tip them up, and as you saw earlier, I also put the bits in the lid. I don't like having this kind of a waste, so okay, I really hope this is in your view. And I just want to come in. And it just looks great when it's done. It just looks a bit weird when it's uh like you see being coloured in. So but I think it just looks amazing when it's finished. But I've wanted to do my own rubber stamps for a while, so I'm just in the middle of building up a collection of stamps to actually send to the manufacturers to be done professionally. And this is really why I um, got my stamp making machine, so I could see if it was something that I wanted to be serious about. So Spirit Stones is going to have its own range. In a couple of months it'll have its own range of stamps. And I'm really excited about that. So, there we go. Wow, didn't want to come undone, did it? Okay, this nice purple. And then the green's going to really kind of brighten this up and really add to the texture of it all. And these just make really lovely pieces. I think, anyway. I think they look pretty good. So let's put, this is why I put it in the lid, because then when you do it up, it all just goes back in there. Okay. Here we go. Lovely ghibli. Normally, for this kind of project, there's just enough in the lid anyway. So, right, really... Now there's not many spaces left without the micro powder on for the green to catch on to. But filling it in like this it will work. And then I can go around the outside and then all the powders that are spilt over the edge are all gonna contribute towards a multicolored around the edge as well. So the one thing that I forget to do, I don't know about anyone else, is to actually make holes in my work to uh, put clasps and stuff on so we just need my brush away brush which is the brush I use to just dust away so there you go that is the different colours if you can see that one okay and then we have done this one too with micro powders so the one thing I said I needed to do before I forgot is make the holes and that is what I do because I've got little screws I want to come in here and I want to make just a little bit of an impression in there just a small hole because I want to be able to uh, use the little screw things with the eyelets that's what I want to do so some of these are done some of these are not but anyway all I can say to you is that is our tutorial for today. So tell me what you think, tell me if you like. That is one of the ways you can use your rubber stamps and your polymer clay. So I'm going to do a video for you of my craft room and I'll also do a video for you on making these 
where the world is your oyster and you can make whatever shapes your heart desires. I can show you a few others that I've made. So thank you so much for tuning in to Spirit Stones with me, Kat, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Please subscribe, comment, like, um, give me your questions, give me your suggestions, be nice, just let's just be nice and then the world will be a better place, okay? So thank you everybody for all of your work and your tutorials and uh, thank you for watching. So have a really, really good weekend. I don't even know what day we're on today. It's all been about the work. Anyway, have a really good weekend and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.